Hello everybody, this is Leo from Blau Films and welcome to a very quick tutorial that will cover the Corona layered material. So a few days ago I released a decals pack and I did a tutorial on stickering up this skateboard. Before I stickered up the skateboard I actually grunged it up a little bit and I wanted to quickly dive into how I did that. Here's a render of the clean version of the skateboard and let me show you what the clean material looks like. Inside of the diffuse channel I have the backplate texture for the skateboard and inside of the reflection I have a 1.6 IOR with a glossiness map that is basically just giving a very subtle grunge as if it's just aged plastic. Um, I'm covering it up with a bump channel, I'm using a cavity map as a bump channel in this case and I'm giving it a strength of 60%. All of this is in Corona Renderer, but I'm sure that the techniques will be exactly the same in any render engine you're using. But now let me apply the layered material and let's quickly go to Corona up here and then the Node Material Editor. And in here you'll be able to very clearly see what it is that I did. If you're unfamiliar with how a node system works, um, I would suggest you actually get into learning that a bit. It's very simple once you manage to wrap your head around it. So I have created a layered material in which I am combining the clean version of the skateboard and this incredibly dirty version of the skateboard, which has some holes through revealing the wood and I'm then masking that layer out with this mask texture that will allow some parts to shine through from the shiny material and some parts to shine through from the dusty material. Here inside of Photoshop I've imported that backplate, the diffuse texture. I went to a textures library and I downloaded some of these assets. I have this rusty leaking texture, a very dirty grunge map from like a side of a road, and I have this one which is some damaged plaster. And the cool thing about it is that, let me just show you with this one, if I scale them up to be 100%, rotate them in place, and uh, let's drop them there. This in itself wouldn't make sense because a skateboard, generally speaking, isn't made out of plaster, but it is an alpha channel, so I could import this texture, which is like some plywood, if I increase that to 100 to 1 by 100 as well, sorry, rotate it, get it straight, um, this looks about right. What I can do now is right click on that layer and create a clipping mask. And as long as the other layer is underneath and it stays on, it basically works the same way as using a luma mask or an alpha mask inside of After Effects. You can still play around with the scale of your wood texture over here. And that way you're able to use all these different alpha out grunge maps to layer them one onto the other and create a destroyed version of your skateboard. My final destroyed version looks like this. And my final mask looks like this. As you can see over here, um, white means yes and black means no. I'm including all the rough scraped off edges from the skateboard and all the other sections like dust and dirt. Um, I'm keeping those at a half opacity gray. And then everything that's black over here will be a see-through of the final skateboard. Now, let's see how I actually applied them inside of this material. We have the diffuse channel which is our new dirty one. Then we go to the reflection, which I kept at 1.6, but then added a glossiness layer, which I have created this glossiness layer, but I also have the same glossiness layer from the plastic, and I'm merging them, I'm, I'm blending them together inside of this layer node. I'm basically keeping the bottom one at 100%, and um, the new one, I'm lowering that to about 81%. And then finally we have the same bump channel. Nothing too special there, but then we are layering the glossy clean material as the base material inside of the layered node. And the dirty one, we're putting that to material one with a strength of one. 
and a mask which you can activate down here which is using our um, Luma mask bitmap. And that's it. When you apply everything together, these are the results you get. This is the result of the clean skateboard and this is the result of the grunged up dirty skateboard. Now before I finish this tutorial, there is one more example of the layered material I want to show you. A few months ago I created this tutorial on how to create a realistic earth in Corona Renderer. And last week I decided to do something fun and render out some different variations of the earth model. Just playing around with textures and different lighting scenarios. And I'm definitely making use a lot of the layered material in this situation. So down here we have the... Um, Let's see the previews, because I've noticed in Corona 6 that my layered materials are pretty slow to update. Maybe someone at Corona knows what's up with that. But if you can see over here, I have created a layered material that is made up of another layered material, which is separating the water mesh, which is this black volumetric material, and the land mass which is made up of a layered material from the from the white salt land mass and the gold in the height area. If I open up the node base material over here as well you'll see what's going on in this one. This one is a bit more complicated but don't worry about it it's not that crazy when you go through it. Up top over here I have the salt material which is which is using a displacement map that is showing the height of the planet. There is a normal map for the salt and the glossiness and diffuse map are also for the salt. We're really only using a height map that is even related to the planet Earth. Then we have a second material down here which is the gold material. In here I'm using a glossiness texture which is the displacement texture that has been crunched up a bit until most of the area from the planet is glossy, but not all of it. The way I created gold over here is I give the little anisotropy, I put the Fresnel value to 99, and I tinted the reflection color to be this orange goldish color. The displacement is the same texture as the other one, and in all of these materials the displacement texture is the earth height. You want to make sure that that stays the same as you don't want your final layered material to be clipping. Now, I've layered these two materials together inside of this layered one material, with the salt being the base material and the gold being material one. And then there is this mask, which is also a boosted exposure version of the elevation map, or let's say the displacement map that we're using in the other examples. And then we have this other material at the bottom, which is a water material. It's slightly more complicated. If you want to learn about this, um, you can check out my Earth tutorial, and I go very in-depth of how to create that. I'm basically using a glossiness texture that is excluding the Earth and is giving the right glossiness to the water. It wasn't completely correct when I first imported it, so I put it inside of a filter where I give it a bit of a gamma and a contrast boost. The displacement texture is the same, and we're using some volumetrics over here with um, usually something blue, but because we're making a stylized earth, I'm using a uh, very dark scattering and absorption color with a low directionality and a pretty short distance. And I've combined the layered material up top and the water material inside of this final layered material, with the water being the base material, and the earth being on top of it with a mask that in this case actually excludes all of the water and just includes the earth. It's about the same idea as working with a skateboard. Um, the layered material is a very strong component of Corona Renderer. I'm sure that if you give it a try you'll be able to figure out some crazy ideas and, uh, and that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for a, a bunch of new content. We're releasing a new short film sometime soon. There's another one that will be getting a re-release in some capacity. Fun tutorials. I'm trying to keep a schedule of about one tutorial a week. I'm going to try to squeeze in an extra one on like half the week. 
but only if there's something interesting I want to share with you. And um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching and uh, cheers. Have a good day.